Is your child unsure and unclear about what they want to do after graduating high school? If so, stay tuned to learn more about a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to creating pathways for a brighter future. Hello and welcome to the Career and College Matters show, where we talk about important topics surrounding today's career and college concerns. Our goal is to empower, inform, and inspire you, our viewing audience, with information that will help you to discover and achieve true academic and career success. I am your host, Dr. Mildred Charles, and today I am honored to have Ms. Shannon Collins in our studio. Shannon Collins graduated from Largo High School right here in our county, attended Prince George's Community College, again in our county, and received a scholarship to Howard University in 2011. In 2013, Ms. Collins began her PhD program at the University of Miami, and after serving as a missionary in Central and South America with her church, her desire for proclaiming the gospel of Christ became very clear to her. So Ms. Collins left Miami to study theology at Southern Seminary. At Southern, that's where she married her wonderful husband, Gregory, who was also a student there at the same time. Uh, because she's so passionate about encouraging and equipping, equipping young youths to choose pathway, pathways that are passionate to them, Ms. Collins and her sister began SEC Pathways. And now she lives in Annapolis with her husband and eight-month-old son. So she's here today to talk to us about her program. Thank you so much, Ms. Collins, for being here. Thank you so much for studio. having me. No problem. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart um, because, again, it has to deal with pathways beyond high school. So tell me, before we actually go into this, could you tell me, um, what did you want to be when you, you, you know, when you were a child? What did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, so originally I wanted to be a neuroscientist. Oh, wow. That's what I wanted to do originally. And then from there I wanted to be a surgeon. Okay. Um, I was actually dissecting pigs in <laughs> 11th grade and realized, oh, I don't want to be a surgeon. Oh, my God. And so I changed it to be a clinical psychologist. Okay. And so I was studying at the University of Miami to do just that, be a clinical psychologist. Okay. So it sounds like you knew what your pathway was. Um, but what happened after high school specifically? That's right. So during high school, so I had those plans, you know, from a young age, but not really, I didn't take high school and academics very seriously. I was always very bright and talented and gifted programs and all of that, but I didn't take things seriously. And so it wasn't until after, uh, didn't take, not taking it seriously in high school, after high school, really having to come through with a different plan. And that's when I went to Prince George's Community College and just learned of all the opportunities that they had there. That's, that's amazing, um, and it's, it's funny how you said you, you attended Prince George's Community College. Um, I am a strong advocate mm -hmm. for community college education, and as you and I had talked about it, it helped me a lot, it helped me find my way. What do you think is the problem with parents being more open to uh, allowing their child to go to community college? So I know when I was in school, there was a stigma around community college that basically if you go there, there isn't much more for you. Wow. Um, but what was told to me really my senior year was that, wait, no, there actually are great opportunities through the community college that I wasn't aware of until, I mean, it had to be two months before graduation. Wow. And so I think there's a stigma that, you know, that's where students go who kind of didn't take academic seriously, that's all they can do. But not, not realizing that a community college is really like a gateway to all the opportunities that you would have even had open to you in high school. And it's funny because when the community colleges were founded, they were not called community colleges. Mm -hmm. They were actually junior colleges mm -hmm. because they actually prepared young people for the last two years of their education. Um, and that's how when they get into, once they complete the community college education, they become a junior third year. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned that. But 
again with parents what about the young people what do you think some of their hang-ups are yeah so I think part of it could be just their peers um, the pressure uh, I think just in this Prince George's in Prince George's County is the community the the idea is only four-year colleges and that's the way that you go and so yes. again the community college kind of swept under the rug and so just them seeing their peers everyone's going after the four-year institutions no one's even seeing all the value that there is at the community college absolutely and speaking of the value you mentioned earlier that two months before you mm -hmm. graduated you learned about uh, the honors program what is the honors program? Yeah, so the honors program is a program at, at Prince George's Community College that it are for just students who are excelling academically. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't have to come in with a certain GPA, but once you're there for one semester, you can then apply for it. And so it gives you high, it gives courses at the level of the, of the um, four year college. And so they're easy to transfer. And uh, they basically, the Honors Academy is another program through the Honors program um, that you can also become a part of, and that can guarantee you uh, scholarships to multiple four-year institutions in, in Maryland and D.C. That's amazing. So you're saying it guarantees you? So That's once right. you're in that program, um, do you have to keep, uh, keep maintain a certain GPA? Yes, yes. So you have there's a GPA you have to maintain to re to remain in the Honors Academy. But if you as soon as you graduate, you you're automatically accept it and you automatically have scholarships to those institutions. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Those best kept secrets mm -hmm. for parents who are just, you know, unsure about what the community college and how it can actually benefit them. So in your case, you went to what what school after? Yeah, so uh, at the time, I think they had the same program. So I went to Howard University on a oh, full wow. scholarship. On a full yeah. scholarship? Full ride. That's right. From the honors program that's at right. Prince George's. Full ride. So you really lucked out because <laughs> first of all, you know, it's, it's very affordable to go to a community college. Um, and then after you finished it, uh, I mean, do they have a selection process or? A selection process after the Honors yeah, Academy? So that, I mean, cause you mentioned that you got in and it, it's a guaranteed. But That's right. How does, how does the scholarship piece come into yeah, it? Yes, so there is a selection process to get into the Honors Academy, okay. but pretty much if you have the grade point average and you've been showing yourself to be a student that was as serious about their studies and involved in different organizations, wow. um, it's pretty much, there isn't much reason why you wouldn't be accepted. But after that, as I said, if you're in the Honors Academy and you graduate, you are automatically accepted into a number of schools with scholarships. That's amazing. And can, do you know of other schools besides Howard University that the college is partnered with? Yeah, so I know one other, there are a number of them, but the, another one on the top of my head was one that I really considered, and that was the University of Maryland. Okay, and so they at have, College Park? That's right, so okay. College Park. So they have um, a program that, you, again, you're, full, you're automatically accepted. So when I graduated from Prince George's Community College, mm -hmm. I, had a, I, I was automatically accepted into Howard, automatically accepted into University of Maryland College Park, wow. and then all these other universities. Wow, well, did you have to apply for them? or nope. did nope. You're just well, you know what? You do have to apply, but you're all, you're still automatically because there's a partnership between Absolutely. the Autos Academy and those schools. There is no denying you, <laughs> so you know I, I have accepted into this into this program. And you know what's funny? How you mentioned that <clears throat> again, the benefits of a community college, uh, they actually have that transfer mm -hmm. agreement, mm -hmm. the transfer program. So even if you're not in the honors program, right. the transfer program allows you to have those same benefits. And you know that, as I mentioned with the, you know, told you my story. That's how I was actually able to transfer mm -hmm. into a four-year mm -hmm. university. Um, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I, I mentioned to you that I did not want to be caught dead mm -hmm. at a community yeah. college because of those stigmas that you mentioned. But it was the best decision <laughs> that I could have made for myself. Did you find that being a benefit for you as well? Oh, absolutely. I, I believe going to Prince George Community College um, opportunities that I thought that I lost because of decisions that I made. Not only did I have all those opportunities still opened up for me, but even more that I didn't know of. Wow. Because when you go beyond high school, you begin to think a little bit more differently yes. about your life, about your job, about career, and you have more of an idea, idea of where you want to go. And so absolutely, mm -hmm. it was just, uh, just a blessing, a blessing to my it life. It sounds like it. I mean, you did amazing. I mean, you know, again, being able to get that full ride to Howard University University. Who, know, who knew, That's right. you know? That's right. uh, what about some of your peers? Did your peers take advantage 
uh, uh, these types of programs or did they just go straight to a four-year university? I think some, it was a mix. So some went straight straight to a four-year institution and uh, others had gone to Prince George's Community College, but they didn't know about the program that I knew about coming in. Okay. And so a lot of them maybe uh, started but didn't finish, or they went on to do another, another job, another certification program. But no one that I knew came with me through that program uh, to go on from there. Okay, okay. So then you went off to Howard, and what did you major? Yeah. yeah, so when I went to Howard, I majored in psychology. Okay. And so I did general studies at Prince George's Community College and then psychology because, again, I was on the, on the track okay. to become a clinical psychologist. Okay. And so I did psychology at Howard. And your experience at Howard, um, did, did you find that, you know, going to a community college prepared you for oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Again, I, coming into Prince George's Community College, I was, I was going to work as hard as I possibly could. And so I learned my work ethic uh, at Prince George's, kind of honed it in at Prince George's Community College. And when I got to Howard, I just kind of kept going, taking off, and uh, again, became a, a pretty prominent student at Howard University within my department. And just, and just there, I was uh, actually the first person in psychology to win a, a, um, a university-wide uh, research presentation from our division. Wow. And and so I kind of became known in my department as being the hard worker, uh, even at Howard University. But you sound like a very driven person. And, you know, when we come back, you know, in a, from our next segment, we'll be talking about that. But what is it that drives you? Yeah, and so I think, again, coming through high school and not taking those opportunities, seriously, when I saw my peers going off and getting those acceptance letters, you realize I didn't take advantage of my time. And I just made a promise to myself, from now on, any opportunity that I have, I will take advantage of. And so that's just kind of where it went from there. And you know, what's sad about it is that I wish more young people um, would know about these opportunities because, again, it's a situation where, you know, when you finish high school, as you mentioned, it's mm -hmm. like you're in another world. I always think of it as being, like I tell my daughter, um, real, the real world begins mm -hmm. after you leave mm -hmm. high school. You don't, nobody's checking in on you. You, it's, you're a young adult, you know, you make those decisions. But it's not always easy, mm -hmm. you know, knowing what it is that you want to do. I mean, truth be told, a lot of young uh, adults are still trying to That's figure right. out what they want, what they want to do. That's right. So why do you think it's, it's so important for young people to have, like, some idea of what their next step is after high school? Yeah, so I think it's, it's good to know where you want to go and also the different opportunities because if you only know a few, then you're kind of pushed in a corner, then you find out, I don't even want to do this at all. Yes. And so I think it's important in high school to know the different opportunities that they have so that you can begin making choices from high school so that, I mean, I even know people in PhD programs say they don't know what they want to do. And so yes. when they get to that point, they've been thinking about this for years uh, and thinking about different opportunities and what they really want to do from the end of high school. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that is a wonderful testimony of how this actually works and the benefits that are, are available. Um, so we're going to take a break. So in our next segment, Ms. Collins is going to come back and just tell us about how her, she started her program uh, to help young people make good decisions about their college and career choices after high school. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one fourth of one half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Career and College Matters show, where we talk about important topics surrounding today's career and college concerns. Joining me in the studio today is Ms. Shannon Collins, and she's here to talk about her nonprofit organization, SEC Pathways, which is helping young people answer that what now question after high school. So, that's, uh, tell us about SEC Pathways. Yeah, so SEC Pathway is again, it's a nonprofit, okay. and our goal, our passion, is that we provide high school students not only with the information, but also with the connections right before they graduate to help them develop where do they want to go as far as career okay. after high school. Now, does that lead to uh, going right to college? Is that a certification program? Is that a training program? We want to give them all the information so they can make a really good decision, um, not with limited information, but with as much information as we can actually give them. That's that's awesome. So what made you want to start this organization? Yeah, so as I was saying, I didn't know about all the different opportunities that were available to me until two months before graduating high school. Okay. And so before being told that, I kind of had a defeated attitude. Um, mm. I kind of felt as though it's kind of it's too late for me I wish I would have made different decisions and now it's just too late and so when I was told that wow there's another opportunity for me to actually yes. work hard and excel that was just such a blessing to my life and so um, I just really want to share that information with students and have them also be able to make a choice and uh, so uh, you mentioned earlier I started this organization with my sister and so her story is pretty similar very very bright coming through high school um, knew what she wanted to do had a plan but she wasn't aware of the different opportunities if you didn't have the resources necessarily to start off going to a four-year institution mm -hmm. and so that limited the track in which she would have went through and so just us together just kind of thinking about the the limitations limited information put on our lives yes. we wanted to stop that from happening in other people's lives as well that is a wonderful way to give back in a sense because you're so right it you know young people nowadays with the social media mm -hmm. the way they compare themselves you know the name brands that they want not just in, in what they wear but the name brands when it comes to going to a university mm -hmm. they don't want the community college tagline they want you know university of whatever so I'm, I'm glad to see that you were able to pull from your experience and and to say okay you know what we're gonna make a difference so what is the actual mission statement for um, SEC Pathway. Yeah, so we want to help students to discover, create, plan, and pursue pathways oh. to a brighter future. Discover, create, plan, and pursue. That's right, that's, that's right. Wonderful. So that is our, that's our mission, that's our goal, and we want to kind of with with students but also with parents okay. helping parents to also uh, help their student help their child kind of make some of these decisions because sometimes parents don't even know and so they can have the same mindset that the child has about there only being one way yes. and when their child may not fit that one way they may also feel uh, that there isn't a lot of opportunity as well and so uh, for me being a new parent me and my husband like we want to teach our son that there's more than one pathway and you actually have a choice yes and you mentioned the one pathway um, so is that the whole purpose to kind of again expose them to different pathways that's right that's right and and you mentioned some of the pathways that you're you're focusing on so can you tell us about that and how that relates to some of the programs and services that you offer yes yeah, so we we're not just college prep we will help with that we have programs to help with college but we're also helping students look at trade schools okay. um, there's employment great employment that Absolutely. they might be interested in and trade schools are a great option certification programs yes. through organizations like Goodwill that are free to students that they may not know of um, but what the student must have is their high school diploma Absolutely. And so we really want to just really press finish and then you'll have so many opportunities to choose from than if you were to stop at the finish line beforehand. Absolutely, and that's that's another thing, the fact that, you know, there are those opportunities out there, but, you know, the high school diploma is a basic, yeah. basic minimum because in order to get to some of these trade mm -hmm. schools um, or take certification pr programs, they may not ask for the requirement for a college degree, mm -hmm. but they at least to need to know that they could check that off. That's right. And so you mentioned about that one pathway. Mm -hmm. 
what do you think it is that is driving our society to share, you know, get our young people and parents to think that the only way to success is to take the four-year college route? I think that there is a glorification of college wow. that, I mean, I've, I've gone to and finished programs at, I don't know, five universities. <laughs> and wow. so I know there is a, there's an image that college has, uh, that that once you reach there, you've reached the top or you've, you've reached the pinnacle of success. But I know that's really not true. Absolutely. Um, because you can graduate with that degree and you have nowhere to go afterwards. And so I think, like I had that idea going yes. into college, a lot of people, have, I mean, from um, it's the way that even the universities sell their schools. Yes. You know, come here, you have a, you'll, you'll open up all opportunities to yourself. Yes. And it's kind of, it's, um, they're promising more than they can really, they can really give. You've, you hit it right on the <laughs> nose. You hit it right. And in, in many ways, they're trying to help, uh, they're trying to get our young people to think that if they take this one path, mm -hmm. they're going to automatically be guaranteed success. And as you and I know, um, well, actually, let me ask you, do you believe that the four-year college degree guarantees success? I, or? No, I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Um, again, going all the way into the PhD, you know, it's, you you kind of get into a trajectory where, okay, now just your bachelor's, okay, now just your master's, yes. and now your P it, it doesn't, and it'll go on and on and yes. on from there. And even with the PhD, I know people who do not have jobs coming right out yes. of graduating with a PhD. And so, no, I don't, I don't think, I know that that is not 100% true. And um, again, the idea of success, uh, you realize that it's not truly what you thought it was once you get to the end of uh, a degree or graduating college, you realize that yeah. it's, it's definitely more than just what you thought. And you know, you're speaking so, you know, right to my experience and, and uh, to the point where I actually suffered a, de you know, a depression after it was all over because I did all this schooling right, you know, after high school and I was told you gotta do this and then when it was over, I'm like, I had that now what? Mm -hmm now what do I do experience? And so I'm just so happy to hear that there are other youth advocates, you know, out there trying to help make a difference. And, and one difference in particular is the after graduation um, pathway plan that you have. Can you tell our audience about that? Yes, and so our after graduation pathway plan is just to help the student write down one, the different pathways they may want to con they want to consider. Okay. And so That's not great. only the different options, so that could be a, a college, could be a two-year college, four-year college, trade school certification program, we want them to write it out. Okay. Um, what is the job that they want to go for and which which level of schooling or education is going to get them there? But also wh who can they contact right now? Okay, so basically <laughs> providing those resources. That's right, that's okay. right. So they can take it, so we're gonna have it in, um, in like written form, but also digital form. Okay. So they can save it and come back to it, change it, modify it, but we want them to write down the program, the job they want, but also who can they contact now? And we'll have that information for them. A point person, they can call on the phone and say, I have a question, what do you think about this? So if a parent is watching and they're saying, you know what, my child needs this program. They need to be engaged They because they're having a hard time figuring it out. Uh, how do they, you know, so they, they sign up for your program. What does the, the program actually look like in terms of, you mentioned writing it down. What else do you guys do to, to help them to get that clarity? So we have what we call pathway advisors. Okay. And so pathway advisors, that's, that's really where, where you can access us through um, over the internet. Uh, yes. through email, through maybe sometimes phone call, you can give us a call, ask questions that you have. Uh, we do offer workshops, different work okay, workshops we'll be um, offering throughout the year. And so we're partnering with a program, uh, basically a business in Miami, which has, um, it walks students who want to go to college, it walks them through the application process. Oh, that's great. And so great. this program can cost upwards to $600, $500. But for our students, we'll get them a discounted rate. I mean, sometimes we can get it for the students free oh, we can get their student for under a hundred dollars okay and so we have that for them That's financial a, a financial course that they can go through as well mm -hmm. and so so we have the workshop
workshops. We have the pathway advisors that are basically accessible to contact with questions. Yes. Um, we'll be have we're basically working as a liaison to, with okay. them in different organizations for internships, putting them in contact with yes. different people. Um, but they can reach us through reach us through our website uh, at seccpathway.org. Okay. And so again, those workshops, pathway advisors, and also we can give them low cost resources that may be helpful to the student. Absolutely. So can you tell us about uh, any success stories with any young people who've been through their program? And so we're, we're a brand new uh, organization. Okay. Uh, so we have we don't have any success stories just yet. But they're coming oh, because they're you coming. have the That's right, right. You That's have right. the right, right. mission. Okay. And, and so before um, my sisters and I started this organization, uh, I actually did a little bit of this work before. So okay. I would come back and go to Largo High School and speak with students and kind of kind of um, come in the classroom and talk to them about my story and tell them about the many opportunities at, at uh, Prince George Community College. And so there actually has been some success stories of students who went through that same exact way that I did through the Honors Academy and then on to even PhD programs as well or on to other jobs uh, from Prince George's uh, Community College. And I, and I think that's amazing that because you graduated from Largo, I mean, you're able to connect with young people. If they see you coming and like, you know, like, wow, you did this. So what is your message to students, you know, when you go out and you do the public speaking? Yeah, so it's just what you were saying, that there is not one pathway. And so my message is do not quit. Um, don't quit on yourself because That's you want to keep all your opportunities and your options open so that like I did and I went the completely opposite way. Yes. Um, you want to keep all your options open so at the end of the day you choose and no yes. one tells you no. And so again, continue to press forward, um, look at all the options you have and make sure you're doing what you have to do to keep them open so you can make a, a choice at the end of the day that you choose and you don't feel was chosen for you. Absolutely, and what would you say to parents, you know, about, you know, your program and how they can help their, how it can help their young, young uh, child? Yeah, so I would definitely say that our program can help their child, again, if their child has a desire to be whatever they desire to be, we, our program can help their child continue on with hope that it is never too late to, to find that way. And so uh, just the parents who a uh, child may be discouraged by their, their, academic, their academics or their finances through our program, we want to give their child hope again that whatever they choose to do, we can help them, uh, pretty much any and every student. There, there's something that we can help them with. So what is your contact information, a website? I, you mentioned it earlier. Can you give that to us again? That's right. So SEC pathway.org that's okay. our website we're also on Facebook we're on Instagram uh, you can follow us you can send us a message we'd love to get with you okay thank you so much well that is our show for today we again want to thank Miss Shannon Collins you know for being here and talking about her wonderful program SEC pathways we hope that you found the information that she shared with us useful and valuable so tune in next week to hear from our special guests who are going to talk about passion and starting their own company. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and don't forget to do what you love and love what you do. Bye for now.